Oftentimes in life, there are things so peculiar that their story needs to be told, and for me to see it with my own eyes. In this case, a shed. Or is it just a shed? You see, I first heard about this shed while researching obscure European history. I learned that during the Cold War, Sweden built many nuclear bunkers and weapons systems to prepare for war with Russia. 99% of them have been blown up and demolished, with this shed being the last of its kind. However, in order to remain as incognito as possible, the Swedish military hid an entire four-story nuclear bunker slash weapons system facility inside of the mountain underneath the shed. So without knowledge of where it is or how to get in, I booked 28 hours of trains from Bern, Switzerland to Stockholm to figure it out. Sweden is widely known for their historic neutrality, but during the Cold War they made a very clear stance against Russia and were going to protect themselves with everything they had. I tried to find the exact location of this shed using every method I had, but nothing worked. Finally, I decided to call a random restaurant on the huge island it's located on, a remote island in the northern high coast region named Hemson. I called this restaurant because somebody had to have information on this shed. And as extreme luck would have it, the first person that answered was the only person authorized by the Swedish military to give me access to this abandoned facility. Excellent. What, what nationality are you? Because we're actually going to drive through protected by the military areas. The States, America. Yeah, cool. Excellent. What, what nationalities are not allowed? Okay, I cannot tell you. Turns out he also owns a restaurant. So with luck on my side, we arranged to meet in the neighboring town of Harnesand to explore the shed. It's fitting. The first person we'll meet today is Daniel, a friendly, country music-loving Swede ready to show me around. Oh, oh here, let me... Oh. Yeah, okay. That didn't happen. He's not the grumpy one. Yeah. That's good. But oh, this right here is yeah. something. It's a cannon. 15.2 millimeters double. Okay. Well, that's badass. That's Clefson. Yes. Okay, and so that's where the shed is. Yes. It's. It's so unassuming, you wouldn't expect. Next, we meet an absolute legend, a man who goes by the name of Esso, who was the man to save this location from being demolished. He's a decorated Swedish military official and a man who has over 100 family members. He will be giving us a tour of this shed. He's also never flown a drone before. You wanna fly a drone? You have. Yeah, you wanna fly it? <laughs> and he absolutely crushed it. This is the high coast of Sweden.
control sample and we will have a wash house, barracks, kitchen and water and so on and stores. <laughs> and you have to take care of yourself. I go first and then you go. Ah. It's colder. Here is the next barrier. Engines. You have two engines here for all equipment. Yeah, these Volvo engines, huh? Volvo Penta. That's Swedish engineering. Yeah. This is a thick door. This one's not as heavy. To have fresh air, if you have to close everything, you can have air going around in this fortification. I had fresh air for about 10 to 12 days. And no air from outside. This is connected to the big engines you saw two stairs steps uh -huh, uh -huh. and you can control it from here. What happens if I press start? <laughs> yep. Just press the button and run. It is equipment for radio stations. Now that's kind of what this whole station was, was kind of like a, a measuring station. Yeah, it is a measuring station. Look at this thing. Going to the measure station. So this is connected to the radar above and connecting to the TV camera and connecting to the laser. So with this, Radar, you start and you will see every target on on the sea. And to the left and to the right, you have two things that will be called the target tracker. So you will do your observation in this radar, and you have the possibility to arrange a target to this target tracker and the second target to, to this target tracker. Meaning, meaning uh, hypothetical like Russian ships yeah. coming in yeah. and trying to target the Russian ship yeah. on, okay. on the Baltic Sea. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, that's right. And you, you see the target and you take this pool and put it to the center and start. And then press so, start. Uh, Just like a video game. Oh, it is. <laughs> and, and in this, you have uh, the possibility to see the speed and the range and all that. So everything will be counted. That so the gun will have the absolutely best information. We are we are here now, and there you have the heavy artillery, and from this place how long will we go up here from this place and down here we had five different measure stations which gave data to the artillery and now this is the only one we have left mm -hmm. you had you had a cross when you move this, you had a cross that you put on the target. Right. And then you put down uh, these two buttons and the target hit, the, the cross hit the target. 
and you can could follow it and you get your range and distance and so on that and you were in the middle mm. and then you said okay we will shoot down this target and we said big the Donald Duck sticker no necessary with this one you can have contact with all the all you want to have contact with inside or outside this place and you call a lot of measure stations people aboard and outside it's very simple i think it's from 1960 1950 it's it's okay you just if you want to talk with this one for example it is a, a light light a bit of battery put this one call up and you will talk to them barracks i think you call it oh yeah definitely barracks This looks like a hostel to me. So if Russia will attack us, I take my family and I take care of this. Not exactly the most comfortable no. mattress. We have all the equipment in one. It's a blanket and so on for every bed. Yeah. That's a Swedish pillow. Hmm? Summer of 89. And down there you have water tanks, fresh water, oh. mm -hmm. and this is, you call it a store perhaps? A store? Ah, it's uh, things for use, using, everything in place. From when it was left? Yeah. If the enemy used the gas, you had to protect the ground and then you put out this to walk on a safe place oh. and oh. then you destroyed all the gas but they put out this first and then you knew we are safe on this place only. so you say it's it's uh, unusual for someone to come here yes versus we will normally don't show this place oh yeah and the for the this is where i would live <laughs> Equipment for the kitchen. Yeah. Standard issue kitchen. <laughs> standard issue kitchen axe. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, to cut up the elk, of course. Look at this thing. Why do you think that it was hidden? Essentially, like because it was put underneath a shed. More more is. Atomic bombs for Hiroshima and Nagasaki. All telephone cables and so on will function even after the explosion. I want to extend a special thank you to the team at Himso Fastening that took such great care of me Daniel, Wilma, Esso, and of course Krister, who made this possible. If you should ever be interested in visiting Sweden, a trip to Hemso Fastening is one you cannot pass up on. I'll put their website's link in the bio. If you liked the video, please remember to leave a like and subscribe for more. I also want to announce that I have added a new membership function on my channel, which you can choose a level for and join. There are a ton of perks, including members-only videos. In fact, I will be releasing a members-only video soon that gives a full exploration of the main facility here at Hemso Fastening. With much more content to come, including exclusive posts, photos, and streamlines of communication with our team, I hope to see you there. Thanks for watching.